release. So we thank you, Lord, for your anointing. We thank you for your presence. Uh, come on, just lift your hands. His presence is in this room. Thank you for your presence, God. God, we want your presence. We want more of you. We want to go deeper in you, God. We want you to stretch us. Bring us to the end of ourselves. I don't know about you, saints, but I made a declaration to the Lord that, that I'm willing to die to my desires, my interests, whatever it is, God. This generation needs God's power. And I have marked for myself, Obaste, a place just a few days ago when I told the Lord, this is where I die, Lord. And whatever I have to do to acquire your power that will transform lives, I'm willing to do it. And God is calling all of us to, this, to that place. All of us. All of us. The amount of darkness that's being released in this earth, the level of demonization is just incredible. I just left the store over there a few minutes ago before coming in here and there was a, a, a demonized woman terrorizing that store and the owners, man, just, just, just really just manifesting and just, you know. And I knew in my heart, it's going to take another degree of power to deal with that. And I was, uh, I'll get to this, y'all sit down, I'll get to this word. I was uh, Saturday, had been on a time of fasting and praying all day long and just doing what I do, pray all day and drive. And I'm in Spring Valley. I pick up a couple people, maybe by no more than about eight people. And uh, this one young lady sat about two seats behind me to my right, enough for me to, if I look back, I could see her. But all of a sudden, I felt this urge to, to just strike up a conversation, just talking natural things. And I was talking about the fact that our nation is changing right before our eyes. And uh, the cultural co dynamic of our nation is going to be, whereas the inhabitants of the nation are going to become the minority very soon. I said, but we have to look at this differently. I said, there's a yearning desire on me to be able to speak Spanish. And I'm challenging myself. I shared that with you all. I'm challenging myself because I want to be able to minister to them so badly. And so with a little bit of understanding I do have, I do communicate, but I was telling the young lady, I says, we need to seize the opportunity to become bilingual because it, it will add more value to your life. It will add more value to your life. And so as I was talking to her, she began to talk about where she was going. She was going to the hospital in Westchester County to see her 86-year-old grandmother. And I asked what was wrong. She said her grandmother had cancer and she had, had diabetes. And all of a sudden, the urge came over me. I started praying. Right, Let me pray for your grandmother. Start praying for her grandmother. And then uh, she began to talk about her needs. And I said, I said, your greatest need is Jesus. I just came out and said, your greatest need is Jesus. Out of all the things you think you need, your greatest need is Jesus. And that led to me ministering to this young lady for about 10 minutes. And I got to uh, Lot J in Bay Plaza, not Bay Plaza, but in, uh, but in uh, uh, Nyack. And uh, the Lord said, get up now. She's ready. And I was able to lead that young lady to the Lord. And while I was praying for her, Pastor, the demons start to manifest. They were trying to choke her words. And she couldn't get it all. I said, I said, don't worry about that. Just continue to pray and repeat after me. And she got through that whole prayer and she, the floodgates broke. And the spirit of God told me, discern, discern that she had multiple devils in her. 
And I told them all, because I still had one person left on the book, on the bus. I said, now leave her quietly and don't act out. And she broke more. And so that girl was totally set free right there. And she cried for about 10 minutes, Pastor. And I'm telling you, people are demonized. Now, she had demons that she probably didn't even know she had. Controlling her. And that freedom came. So we need to tap into God's power in a whole new dimension. And the question is, what are we willing to do that requires us putting our self-interest aside to really take on the interest of Christ? And so that's not my message, but I want to encourage you with that. I want to talk about unlocking the mysteries of God's will for your life. Subtitle, decoding, decoding what, uh, what God releases in your spirit. Decoding what God releases in your spirit. How many of you know that all that you know about your life right now is not all God's will for your life? Amen. How many know that there's more? Amen. So if there is more, God wants you and I to ascertain the more of his will. There are things that are hidden to us at present that God wants to unlock to you and I. And I want to talk to you about how we can unlock things that God has willed for us, but are still veiled and hidden from us in mystery form. Go with me to Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. We all know this. And I want you to pay attention to the words. Because this is, this is uh, the children of, of, of Israel, literally in captivity, and God gives uh, Jeremiah this promise. He says, this is a promise really of hope. They're in captivity, but God says, if you'll do this, if you'll call unto me, verse 33, uh, 33, 3, he says, call to me and I will answer you. Isn't that powerful? Think about this now. Are there times when you have prayed and it seems like God has not answered you? Anybody? There's times when we have prayed and it seems like God has not answered. But notice what God says. He says, I will, which means God puts himself on the line. That's his integrity. When he says, I will answer you, we can, we can expect the answer to come. Come on, tell him, neighbor. When God says he will answer, we can expect an answer to come. In other words, God would be a liar. If he says, I will answer you, and then there's no apparent answer, then something's wrong with us, not God. Come on, say amen. Because now we need to know how it is God is answering us and what way he's answering us. He says, he says, call to me and I will answer you. And then he says, and show you great and mighty things. Great and mighty, where are these great and mighty things? Notice what he says, these great and mighty things are fenced in and hidden. So in other words, when you call, when you pray, he reveals, he discloses, he answers, but those things are veiled from you. Watch this now, they're veiled from your natural mind. They're veiled from your natural man but they're not veiled from your spirit, man. So God answers every prayer. Say that with me. God answers every prayer. And the ones that we do not comprehend in this realm, they're saved in a bowl in heaven to be released in the last days as wrath into the earth is God's judgment. But God wants you and I to be able to recognize his answers because he emphatically says, I will answer you. Come on, stay with me. He says, these things are hidden. They, I've answered, but they're hidden. He says, he says, that these things are fenced in and hidden. Notice what he says, what you do not know. And the problem right here is there are things that God has willed for you and I. They are, they, they, there are times when we have prayed things that God has willed for us that he answers us, but they are hidden from us and we don't know them. In other words, we don't recognize them. So know here means recognize. We have to be able to recognize or discern the answer. Are y'all with me? You're following me? He says, which you do not know. 
Do no, because here it is, do not distinguish and recognize. In other words, the answer comes, but there is something about our ability to recognize the answer. Because the most offering, we're still functioning out of our intellect. We're still functioning out of human reasoning based on the five senses that we have that we are so cultured in. So God releases an answer, but we do not distinguish it or recognize it. So he's trying to help us. Say he's trying to help us. He says, do not distinguish, this is the Amplified Bible, recognize, have knowledge of, or understand. So in other words, we need another level of understanding to recognize when God answers. When you look at the word understand, it is attached to light. Light always brings understanding. Tell your, tell your name's a neighbor. You need a different dimension of light. Ooh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I feel something, Pastor. Because the more light you have, the more understanding you have, the more discernment you have, the more you're able to distinguish when God releases answers that are hidden from us uh, that we cannot distinguish, naturally speaking, or by human reasoning. So this word call, it means God says, he says, it means, it means to cry. More literally, it means uh, to seek me, to cry unto me, to pray. God says, if you pray, I will answer you. There's some things that are hidden from you. There's the things that I want you to be able to receive, but you must be able to recognize and distinguish them. And these are things that you don't know. At this point, there are things that you know about the will of God for your life. You're living them. Currently, you are living out some things that God has willed for you. But what else has he willed for you? You ready? Now, we're going to go get it. We're going after it. We, we want the full counsel of everything that God has willed for our lives. Come on, say amen. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. In a similar thought, Paul begins to show us uh, things about, these are deep spiritual truths that Paul begins to, by the Spirit of God, reveal to us about the wisdom of God and hidden mysteries. As it pertains to things that were hidden from other ages, but now God has revealed them when the perfect time came. So here in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6 to 16, he says, How be it we speak wisdom? Wisdom among them that are perfect, mature. So this wisdom is not earthy. There is a higher wisdom. It is a wisdom that is from above, which is peaceable and easily entreated. The Bible says, James says that. He said, but there's a different, there's another kind of wisdom too. It's earthly and it's low level wisdom. He says, but we speak wisdom among those who are mature, which means those who are uh, 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 God's sons, uh, uh, God's daughters who are born from above. He says, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So now the, the, the mind of God, when you articulate the mind of God, when people hear it, it is hidden from them. The truths are hidden from them. They cannot comprehend it. Why? Because they don't have light. Because this truth is uh, from a different world. So even though you're talking to people and you want them to understand some things, they can't understand it because they don't have light. This is wisdom from a whole nother world. You can't understand it with your natural mind. And, and even us who are born again are still baffled about, about some spiritual truths because our minds haven't been quite renewed yet. So you can be a child of light and still have darkness in you. Which means that if we still have levels of darkness in us, we have less of God's light, which means we can't understand some things. Although God wants to give us these things, although God wants to release these things and he has, we don't have enough light. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, turn on the light. 
we're going to talk about how to do this now. now. Now, remember, you are where you are, but there's more. You know what you know about God, but there's more. So it, the, the, it takes a hunger and a thirst to pursue something that we don't have. All right. So in other words, you can't get comfortable in what you know of God. You can't be comfortable in how much of the volume of the book you have and possess right now. Because if you're going to have a greater understanding of what God's will is for your life, you got to have more word. You got to have a greater volume in you. Why? Because when ah, bro, I'm getting ahead of myself, man. I, let me slow down a little bit. I, I, I feel this thing, man. So the, so the greater the volume, the more light. More word, more light. More word, more understanding. More word, the greater ability to distinguish the will of God. When God speaks, when God answers, we can recognize it. Because remember, God and his word are one. God is limited to the boundaries of his word. If God wants to answer you, he always answers you in the nature and context of his word. But if you don't have understanding on the, at the level of the nature and context of his word, although he places an answer there, you can't distinguish it. Come on, say amen. amen. So now we have to pursue a greater depth of God's word. Because where we are is only a fragment of where we can be. Because you and I can have greater capacity. Amen? Uh, uh, of understanding in spiritual things. Jesus said in the volume of the book, it is written to me. Amen? So, so there are volumes of things that God can expose to us that will increase our understanding. Come on, say amen. Y'all ready? I'm, I'm, man, I'm telling you, I'm going back past the man, line upon line, preach it, man. Let me tell you something. If you don't have a, 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 a Bible or a notebook, and you can go back down and start to go into the pages of this book, let the Holy Ghost speak to you and get Rhema and write that stuff down on the side of the pages like you used to do. Glory to God. I'm telling you something. If you don't go back to those basic ways, come on now, of pursuing God, you're going to have limited knowledge. Mark up your Bible or get yourself a notebook. Come on, amen, bless the Lord, because we, come on, amen, we, 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 we about to go to a whole nother level of understanding. So what he says here now, again, verse 6, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, not yet the wisdom of this world, nor uh, of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So God called you to be deep. You are part of the initiated. Amen. Bless the Lord. He says, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. There was, there was, there was God's wisdom wrapped in the whole plan of redemption, amen, that even the powers of darkness, amen, were tripping over the fact that uh, God was using them and pulling the strings so that they would kill the Son of God, amen, so that God's purposes could be fulfilled. Because had they not killed him, God's plan would never have gone into motion. So he hid it from them. They thought they had him, but God said, no, I got you. I'm about to wrap this thing up like a vesture. And then what, notice what it says, and then it slips into a whole nother thought. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Somebody say natural eye, natural ear. That's of the physical man. Okay, follow me now. He says, the things which God had prepared for them that love him, but God had revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God. 
there's some deep there's, there's some deep things in God. There's some there's some deep truths. There's some hidden truths. The things that are veiled from the human mind, they are deeper than what we know right now. Even if you got a revelation last year about something about God that He revealed to you, there's even a deeper truth about that revelation. Because you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, God can give you even more revelation. Because God's word is pregnant. But look at what it says. For the spirit search of all things. Yeah, even the deep things of God. Now, I love this because God has, he has purposed some things for us that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. These things have not entered into the heart of man. He says, but these things God has prepared for those who he loves. But God has revealed them unto us. He's revealed them unto us. So in other words, this is emphatic. God says they have been revealed to us. In other words, they're downloaded into you. Are you with me? They have been revealed. They're downloaded into you. But what part of you? Your spirit. So they're in your spirit, man. These deep truths, and the more word we get into us, the more rhema we get into us, the, the, the more the revelation of these deep truths, they get downloaded into our spirit, man. Watch this now. I love God. And then it says, for what man knoweth the things of a man? What man knows the things of a man? What man's spirit man knows the things about his natural man? What man knoweth the things of a man? Say natural, spiritual. Say spiritual eyes, spiritual ears, natural ears, natural eyes. So you got two sets of eyes, two sets of ears. Watch how this thing works. What man knows the things of man save the spirit which is in him. So your spirit man knows more than you know. Your spirit is light. Your spirit has been illumined. But he's becoming more illuminated by more exposure to light. So when God speaks to you, he doesn't speak to you. He speaks to your spirit. So when you pray, the answer comes to your spirit man. But the difference between your spirit man and your natural man is your natural man has to be renewed to understand what your spirit man received. I'm getting ahead of myself. So when God made this truth real to me, I began to realize some stuff. So if I get it in my spirit, man, but my natural man is unfruitful or undeveloped, there's some answers, some, some things that I've been praying about that God gives me that are now seemingly on delay, waiting for me. Waiting for me to get word up enough so that what I get by rhema, come on now, it's already saying amen to what God, and I can recognize it because God put it there as light, but I don't have enough light to understand it until I get the rhema in me. And it says amen to what, and I know it's God because now God's word, come on now, and his word, whenever God speaks to you, the nature of a thing is, 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 it, it is confined to his word. So I know that that thing God placed to me is what he placed to me because now the word that I needed to understand that communication now says amen. This is what God put in me. So we're getting this stuff all the time, but God is waiting for us to mature and develop to be hungry enough to get enough word in us to recognize how he's communicating. Are y'all getting this? Man, I'm, I'm getting revelation on that bus, man. Woo, Jesus. I tell you. He says, what man knoweth the things of a man? So no, you can know the things of your life, but they are spiritually discerned. Notice what it says. Even so the things of God 
knoweth no man, not your natural man, but the spirit of God. So the spirit of God communicates with your spirit. Now we receive not the spirit of this world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. The same thing that Jeremiah was saying, God, God says, he, he says, call unto me, you know, and I will show you things, right? He says, let me go back and read it real quick. He says, call on me and I will answer you and show you the great and mighty things fenced and hidden, which you do not know. You don't, you don't recognize them. I, wanna, I, wanna, I, I want you to be able to recognize these things that I prepared for you. I want to show you these things. I want you to be a partaker of all that I provided for you. Because if you understand uh, these things, uh, you're growing at another, uh, another level of maturity, and I can use you greater. You're not limited anymore. So, so, so we must receive the things that have been freely given to us because they prepare us not only to reign in life and to benefit from uh, this covenant-keeping God who should keep it. He says, I keep all my promises when I answer. When, when you call, I answer you. So what, what kind of a testimony do we have? Do you walk around with our head hanging down? Amen. This God says, I can't lie. And all of a sudden, we walk around like, man, when are you going to answer these prayers, God? Would you pray more if you knew how to decode what God gave you by way of answer? You would pray more because you'd be able to recognize when the answer came. And you'd be more confident and more bold in your praying and a stronger witness in your testimony because you're walking around as the literal manifestation of the goodness of a God who cannot lie. That when he says you ask, you shall receive. When you seek, you shall find. When you knock, the door shall be open. He says everyone to ask and receive, everyone seek, finds, and the one who knocks, it, that's emphatic. So would that change the whole dynamic about how we approach God? If we learn how to decode, Does this make sense? So what is a mystery? A secret? It is, it, is, it is once hidden, but now revealed in the gospel. It is something that is hidden. Go with me to, uh, I, I quoted this, but I want you to see it. Matthew chapter 7. Because this, 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 this was helping me realize That as we stay hungry for God, as we fill up, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word to proceed out the mouth, mouth of God. As we fill up on more of the promises, more of the commandments, more of the principles, more, more of the precepts of God, it gives us a wider range of light, so to speak, in multiple areas of God's will to distinguish when God gives us an answer. You could be so one-sided in your approach to the word of God. You could be reading just your favorite scriptures. But you don't understand the ways of God, which means you limited your capacity of understanding when we don't go after the full counsel of God. What if he wants to rebuke you, but you're self-justifying yourself in some areas? Because he wants to make you and I a partake of his holiness. But we're so one-sided in grace and, you know, God's mercy and all of that. And we can't distinguish when he said, I told you last month, no. And a promise comes up and speaks to you emphatically. You know, you know watch this now, you know zip code. And the light of his answer registered in your spirit, man, but now in the eyes of your understanding actually decodes the actual verse where God speaks to you. And you know that means no. Watch this now. Look at Matthew 
He was dealing with me with all this stuff, man. I said, man, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Yeah. You're speaking. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, 8, NLT says, keep on asking. Why? You will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. I often think about the times when I'm at home, you know, and I ask my wife about something and I said, baby, you know, I would look for it, but I don't see it. And she always said, did you see? <laughs> because that requires diligently, diligently searching out a matter. And that's how God wants us to be with the, the, the counsel of his word and his will, to really seek out diligently the full counsel of the matters that deal with life. Keep on asking and you will receive for what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. And this is what blows me away. He says, for everyone who asks, receives. Everyone. That puts God on the line. So that means that we have to transition into another level of understanding that requires us taking in more light. I'm going to get to that point in a minute. I keep bringing it up. He says, for everyone asks, receives. To everyone who seeks, fine. And to everyone who knocks the door will be open. All right, now watch this now. It is the absolute will of God to have answered prayer. Would you say amen to that? That's his will for us to have answered prayer. It is also the will of God for us to know the will of God. Would you say amen to that? It is the will of God for us to discover the deeper things that are in keeping with the fulfillment of his will for our life. Would you say uh, that, that that's also... Uh, Amen and amen. It is the will of God for us to move into the realm of experiential knowledge of the greater things that God has planned for us. Would you say amen to that? And these are the things that God has ordained for the furtherance of his kingdom and for our benefit. These are the things God has given us that must be received through discovery. There are some things that we will never receive unless we discover them. Why? Because they're hidden. Most often, God has already given us things that pertain to his will for our lives, but our maturation with his word is too low for what he has given, uh, uh, for what he has given to us that must become a reality. Most often, they exist in the realm of the spirit. He's blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, but what are they? or even in our recreated human spirit awaiting a day of illumination. You ever have one of those aha moments? And all of a sudden, boom, the day star arises in your heart. And now what was veiled from you has been quickened to you. That is the function of our spirit. But your, but your, your mind had to be quickened or enlightened in order for you to receive that. If his word is not abundantly stored up in our hearts, what he communicates through light, God communicates through light. God is light. God is light. God communicates through light. We'll never find, what he communicates through light, we'll never find an expression by way of his promises which find an agreement with what he communicates, but yet is left in a mystery. So God will communicate with us and it'll come into your spirit man as light. Light, his word is light. His word is truth. It will come, it will come as light. It comes as light because light is revelation. Something secret or hidden until there is an equal level, watch this now, of word light. I know it's gonna sound real deep, so God communicates to you and I in light, but his word is light. Now, when there's an there's a equal level of word light in us, that means the word has been illumined in you. When God communicates to your spirit, man, because your, your, the eyes of your understanding have been enlightened, all of a sudden, boom, word light comes on. A promise agrees with the witness of what God communicated. You, sometimes you know you receive something, but you don't know, what, 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 what is it? What, what is this? Because God has dropped some in you, but you don't have the equal component of word light yet. To agree with that. 
So when we get that word light in us, amen, amen, you recognize, wait a minute, that, that's what that thing is. You're walking around pregnant with stuff that God has released in you, but you don't quite know what it is yet. You could, you could be, free. that's why you got robo shatala bazede bobo shatala. You got to come on, you got to start. Because while you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will begin to illumine that thing. Now, providing you got a promise, he'll start to, he, he'll quicken that promise or he'll lead you. And all of a sudden you'll get to the word of God and bam, got the promise. That's what that is. And now you're all excited. That's what that was. No, it sounds a little deep. Watch this now. Most often they exist in the realm of the spirit or in our recreated human spirit awaiting illumination. God communicates in a dimension that requires a deeper intimacy with his word. If his word is not abundantly started, st stored up in our hearts, what he communicates through light will never find expression by way of a promise, which find an agreement with what has been communicated, but left in left as a mystery. Something secret hidden until there is an equal level of word light in our lives to correspond with the deep hidden truth, which will uh, which uh, which will remain a mystery until we have embraced holistically a deeper word level, which itself is light. I want you to put word and light together. The word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If you want to know where you're going, you need light. So God is going to communicate into your spirit as light, but your, the eyes of your understanding needs light, which is word. So in other words, the Holy Spirit must quicken the rhema in your understanding, the eyes of your understanding, which is sometimes darkened. So most often we pray in faith and God answered and transmits answer awaiting our discovery of what he faithfully has given by way of promise, purpose, or in answer to prayer. This is why the Bible speaks about the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. Now, light brings revelation of what exists. Light always discloses what's already there but may not be not obvious where there is darkness. And I said that before, our spirit man, once regenerated and quickened by the spirit of God, is now alive under God. It represents your spirit. If you saw your spirit, it would be light. Okay? So when it comes to your spirit man, your spirit man now is light. The Bible says, Jesus says, now are you light in the Lord? He's not talking about your body. He's talking about your spirit. It's your spirit. He's talking about, always talking about your spiritual life. Your spirit is light. Now are you light? You're, you're illumined. You have been illumined. So the absence of light always produces the absence of illumination. So the more light we have in us, the more illumination. God wants to uh, reveal the mysteries of his will to us, but we must mo most often cling to the realm of things that pertain to the realm of the senses. The secrets or deeper things of God are communicated, watch this now, spirit to spirit, or in the realm of light to light. God, who is in unapproachable lights, he communicates to our human spirit by way of light, God communicates to uh, 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 communicates light in our lives, which is to our spirit. Here's where we're going to prove it. The more illuminated our spirit man is with the light of truth that comes from God, the more we can discern what we could not naturally or by the natural senses. Anything God reveals to us will never violate the authority, integrity, and nature of his word and person. Anything he communicates. That's why you need word light to recognize or distinguish that this thing came from God. So you'll recognize this is God. That, that, I, I, I got, you know, there's something here. And you may not even know it because God always answers. 
But the moment you get enough word light in you, then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit says, there's your answer. That's what you was praying about. Boom. That's what God had stored up for you. That's the thing he freely gave you. It was a promise, but it wasn't real to you yet. It hasn't been. Come on now. God has given us many things, but but they haven't been quickened to us yet. It's not that real to us. You Listen, you may have a promise lock, locked up in your mind, head knowledge. It's not real yet. You can't receive the truth of that thing. God said it was yours. But when we get to the point where we just holistically go after the truth and the Holy Spirit starts quickening all these things to us, when God communicates that thing in our spirit, man, your natural man is illuminated and boom. We receive it. It's not locked in the annal of the of, of, of the intellect. Now it's now it's it's illumined to you. The light, the light has been shed in uh, into the, the the here it is. How can I put it? It's the spirit of your mind. Because the Bible says. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So there are, watch this now. This is why there are things that are hidden awaiting our maturation in the word of God before there is a discovery. But yet there are things God has already given as a mystery until there is enough light that brings understanding. We must understand the spirit man's functionality. Our spirits will never operate at a heightened degree until we intentionally expose ourselves to as much of the word as we are willing to ask the Lord to give us the capacity by diligent exploration. So in other words, if you have a problem getting in the word of God, you, you got to ask the Lord, Lord, give me grace. Give me grace. Give, give me endurance. Because you know the devil's going to fight you every time you, listen, you, you, when you start to think about, I'm going to pursue God in his word, all of a sudden your plan now is getting sabotaged by all kinds of distractions. But if your aim is to get in that word, you tell God, give me the grace to endure and to feed upon and to be alert and astute in receiving your word. I can sit on that bus, man, and all of a sudden, man, that slumber start coming on me, man. While I'm starting to read, I, I rebuke that thing, man, and get up, start walking a little bit, come back, study. But you got to have all kinds of plans because, listen, if you know that you need more of this in you in order for the promises to become so entrenched in you so you can receive the things that God has freely given to you, the, the thief is going to try to rob every opportunity. Amen. Bless the Lord. Now watch this now. So we got the natural man, we got the spiritual man. We got natural eyes, we got spiritual eyes. We got natural ears, we got spiritual ears. We got a natural heart, we got a spiritual heart. So you can you can go on further down. If the natural man got all that, the spirit man got all that. But he functions in a whole different dimension. Look at what Psalm 51 says. Where am I at? Okay, 15 more minutes. Let's go through some stuff real quick. So I want you to get this, and I want you to pray through this. Look at Psalm 51.6. Look at what David says. He says, thou desireth truth in the inward parts. Where? Inward parts, right? Because in order for your natural man to benefit from this, it has to affect your inner man first. David is telling us before uh, the Holy Spirit is ever poured out, he's got a revelation that God wants truth in the inner man. Because the greatest benefit of truth is going to be for your inner man, and then whatever happens in your inner man affects what happens in your outer man. Your outer man is supposed to follow your inner man. Come on, who's supposed to be in charge? The inner man. And what God wants to do is to get your inner man in charge. So David says here, 
So everything we're going to do, we're not going to neglect, ne neglect the outer man. All right, Paul tells us about how to discipline the outer man. I mean, you buffet that, that, that booger man. You, you do what you got to do to keep him under control, right? You bring him under the authority and governance of God's word. But you want to be able to major on building up your, your inner man because he has to receive what God has freely given to him. Come on, say amen. So David says in Psalm 51, 6, Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts. So, so inward parts. And in the hidden part that he says, he says, in the, and in the hidden part, thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So there is wisdom in your inner man for every situation. Now, watch this now. That's why you got to meditate on all them, uh, all them uh, promises, right, and principles in Proverbs. Because when you need, ah, bro, say so you're struggling in a certain area, watch this now. When the light of God's answer come to your spirit, man, if you've been meditating on the principles of wisdom and the Proverbs, God's going to light upon, he's going to, come on now, he's going to light upon one of those instructions, amen. He's going to light upon a particular area, and you're going to have your answer. It may be for whatever, marriage, it may be for business, it may be for whatever it might be. But if you've been praying about it and God says, I want you to know that I'm willing to answer, then I'm going to give you an answer that's understandable. It's going to be in an instruction. So the more word light we got, how can I help me say it, Holy Ghost? The greater your understanding of God's word, the greater the authority you're going to walk in. Because we want power. But power doesn't come until you have authority. To the degree that you have mastered yourself with the word of God, then you walk in power. God does not grant power where there's no authority. Look at this. So God is the father of lights. He's the father of lights. This is why when he communicates to us by his spirit, he illumines our darkness. Oh, glory to God. Now, if we start acknowledging how much darkness we really get. Now, now darkness is not, doesn't have to be wickedness. Right. It's a lack of understanding. And you and I can't stay where we are. That's what it is. If we start acknowledging that in some areas of our spirituality, there is darkness, we have to say, God, listen, help. Lord, help me in this area. Help me in this area. And so when you say that to God, what he's going to do is lead you to you, where you can get more light. And you know it's going to start with the word. So in other words, we have to be diligent in our area of discovery. First of all, we want to discover more about God. Second of all, we want to discover more about ourselves. <laughs> Amen. You, see, now, when you start acknowledging that you have darkness in you, you're being true and, true and honest with God. Then you're ready. That's the beginning. Come on now. That's the beginning of wisdom. Amen. Bless the Lord. That's the beginning of saying, okay, now I'm going to get something that I didn't have. Because if you never acknowledge, uh, watch it now, the deception uh, will keep you stuck thinking you're all right. When there's so much more that God wants to do, I, I believe the Holy Spirit is saying to you and I that we should not get comfortable where we are. This is an ever-increasing faith. We go from faith to faith and glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So what he does is he illumines our darkness or ignorance by the truth or the light of his word. In James chapter 17, TPT, we know this. Every gift God freely gives us is good and perfect. Streaming down from the Father of lights. Notice what he does. Who shines from the heavens with no hidden shadow or darkness and is never subject to change. So we know that there is no darkness in God. There is no shadow of changing. He is always good, always holy. Amen. First Timothy chapter 6, 16, Amplified Bible says, He alone possesses immortality, absolute 
exemption from death and lives in unapproachable light. Whom no man has ever seen or can see. To him be honor, eternal power, and dominion. Amen. So when it comes to man, the spirit in man is light. I said that before. When it comes to man, the spirit in man is light. It is, that's, that's where we're going. The spirit in man, the spirit of the recreated man, the spirit in the unregenerate man is still dark. It's darkness. It's not light. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a truth real quick. <laughs> but you and I are light. Proverbs 20, 27. Notice what it says. So if this is true, God is light. God communicates to you and I through light or to our spirit, which is light. So God always answers. But now, your natural mind, which has to be renewed, has to be quickened in order to understand what God places in your spirit. Because God always sends an answer to your spirit. But your intellect has to be developed to understand. Otherwise, you will have answers just sitting there waiting on you. Notice what it says. See, in this verse here, it tells you and I what we have to do. Notice what it says. The spirit of man, that factor in human personality, which proceeds immediately from God, is the lamp of the Lord. In other words, your spirit is God's light in a human body. So when God wants to communicate to your spirit, he is light. He communicates that way. So your spirit is light. Say it with me. My spirit is light. There is no darkness in your recreated human spirit. None whatsoever. Now, it can receive greater light, greater glory, greater look, because your spirit, listen, your spirit has to mature in that function. Why? Because it's been in darkness for all the time that you were in darkness. So the more it matures, the more of that greater light it receives. God is the greater light. I'm going to show you this now. Say the sun and the moon. Lesser and greater. The greater light, the sun, illumines the moon, the lesser light. God is the greater light. You are the lesser light. The glory and the light of God illumines your spirit. So the, come on now. But look at what it says here. The spirit of man, that fact of human personality, which proceeds immediately from God, is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inmost parts. So, ooh, do you know that? Do you see what happens? When God communicates, your spirit man, he starts to search. What did God, what, what, what did God release here? He, he searches around. But see, he just don't search by himself. He gets some help. The Holy Ghost helps him. Let's go back to it. Let's go back to it. The Holy Ghost helps your spirit. Remember what we said in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I don't know what verse. I guess it's around uh, the 14th verse. I think it's 14. It says, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God have revealed them unto us by his spirit. Now, your human spirit is searching around. Now, look what the Holy Ghost does. For the spirit search of all things, yea, even the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit which is in him. So now, your natural man cannot ever, he cannot ever discern without illumination. But your spirit man already knows what God gave you. He knows exactly what it is. 
You need the help of the Holy Ghost, amen, to search that matter out. That's what I bro say. See, now, if, if you have a problem with the Holy Ghost, you have a problem with being filled with the Holy Ghost, you have a problem with speaking in tongues, it sounds crazy, you is just crazy, and you don't have nothing to do with that, you are leaving yourself outside of the blessing of God. You will forever relate to God out of carnality. And there is no witness of the spirit in the flesh, but there's always a witness with spirit and spirit. In other words, another word is saying that is agreement. Spirit agrees with spirit. See, see, the, the flesh will resist the spirit and the spirit will resist the flesh. For these two are contrary one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. They are antagonistic. So if you remain carnal, You'll never receive the deep things of God. You'll never receive the things that God has hidden, that, desi that God desires to be uncovered pertaining to your life. Come on, say amen. Is this out there somewhere? I'm almost done. Five minutes. I'm almost done for this week. Proverbs uh, 20, 27 NIV says, the human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light, that sheds light on one's inmost being. So what does uh, Proverbs 27, 7 mean? It means a man's spirit possesses thought. Your spirit possesses thought. Motives, intentions, feelings, desires. So God communicates his desires to your spirit man. All right. And so it uh, a, a person's spirit illuminates who watch this now, who and what they really are. Your spirit illuminates what and who you really are. That's why you got to feed on who Christ is and who he says you are. Because when that thing becomes a rhema, it turns you into another man, another woman. See, you, 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 that promise cannot be taken from you. Because the Spirit bears witness with us that we are the sons of God. Let me end with this. So light must speak to light. The greater light, Jesus, must speak to the lesser light, your spirit, for there to be illumination or revelation of the mind of God in a particular area of our lives or something that uniquely affects your life that is critical for you to know. We Tell your neighbors and neighbor, you have to be in the know in this hour. The same way the greater light, the sun lends light to the moon and it in turn brings illumination to dark places. Have you ever been out on a day where the, where the moon is just so bright? I mean, it's just, I mean, it shouldn't even have that kind of light. It'll light up an entire street and you'll say, my God, wow. That's, that means it is positioned and aligned perfectly with the sun. When the sun has gone down, but yet still that moon is transmitting light. So everything that, that is in darkness is being revealed. Amen. Bless the Lord. And that's what God wants to do. He wants that light to turn on so bright and bright for us. Amen. That there is no darkness in us or ignorance in us at all. So we can see and know and recognize the things that he has freely given unto us. So we need light, the light of Jesus to illuminate inwardly what is not obvious to our senses. Let me stop there and I'll pick up next week. Next week, I want to deal with why, why, why you need to spend so much more time praying in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Did you get anything out of that today? Stand to your feet. Well, let's do some of that. Pray in the spirit for a few minutes. Amen. If 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 you if you've never prayed in the uh, spirit, you've never been filled with the spirit, then I want to encourage you to yield yourself to the Lord to receive that dimension of gifting, that expression of the uh, the Christian uh, life and experience in Christ. 
But if you are filled with, the, filled with the spirit and you haven't been praying fervently, you haven't been releasing yourself, allowing yourself to engage in that dimension, I want you by faith, lift your hands and let the Lord ignite that, that area of your life once again. Ask the Lord to, to, to give you a fresh, a fresh baptism, a fresh infilling, a fresh stirring. Let the river flow. Amen. And if you have been allowing the carnal mind to talk you out of that deeper dimension, I want you to ask God to bring deliverance into your life, to allow your, your spirit man to come to the play for, a place of ascendancy under the lordship of Christ so that you, by grace and faith, can, can yield to that dimension freely. So freedom can come, so the enemy can stop robbing you out of, out, out of this place that God wants you and I to navigate easily. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for a heightened dimension, a spiritual function by way of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you right now. If, you, if you're in the room that you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost, you've never spoken in tongues, I want you to lift your hands and by faith, I want you to believe God. Believe God to receive this gift. To receive this gift. Lord Jesus, you are the one that baptizes. You are the one that releases us into that dimension. And I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you would baptize with the evidence of speaking in tongues that you would ignite that river to flow from the belly, the inmost being of us, your people in this room, particularly if someone, Lord, who has not had that dimension. You know it's the will of God, but every time you think about it, you, 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 you find a reason, a recourse not to, not to yield to that. But today you're making a decision that, God, I'm going to open up my heart to receive the, 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 the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And, Father, I thank you for that river, that river to flow, that, that river to flow, Father, that you would ignite, glory to God, that you would cause that bubbling up to take place in our inmost being. Father, that we will engage that realm, glory to God, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the spirit, Father, that we would engage that realm, Lord God, uh, 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 of the gifting, uh, uh, of the release of the spirit of God in our lives uh, to, to, to tap into, Lord, that greater dimension that you have ordained us to flow in, to live in, to live out of, and to function in this three-dimensional world. God, that we would receive of all that heaven has for us and that we would yield our spirit, man, to receive wisdom and revelation and insight and instruction from above, Father. We thank you in the name of Jesus for a fresh release of the Holy Ghost. Let it be so, Lord. We want everything you have for us. We want every experience you have for us. And we want to be positioned and postured to be used by you, Lord, so that you alone will get all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen.